Real Groups. Today, I am going to do something just a little bit different because I really want to talk about something that that is kind of constantly on my mind. And I want to talk about it because uh, I don't really want to teach something new today. I just want to build us up. I want us, I want to encourage us in what we already know, things that we already have been discussing, things that we know that are going on in our life. We need to be encouraged, you know, in knowing that God is at work within us. And so that's what I want to do today. I know that there is a lot of things going on in this world right now. And, and it doesn't look good. It doesn't. Everywhere we look, it looks like darkness is there, evil is there, confusion is there. There's a lot of things happening, such as our border crisis, you know, and, and the, the human trafficking, our, our government, our every, everywhere we look, everywhere we turn, it just looks like things don't look good. That is truth. Darkness is upon the land. There's no doubt about it. We're all aware of that. But that's not the only thing that's going on. Because what we also have going on is outpourings. It's happening. It also is happening over the world, over the whole world, you know. And we're we're recognizing it. We see it. We know the outpourings that are going on in our midst. We're having it in our campuses, within our ministries that we have. You know, people are getting saved. People are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. They're being baptized. They're being healed emotionally and physically. People are getting hungry for God and just wanting to get rid of their issues and just be about what God wants them to be about. They want to know who they are in Christ. We have incredible things going on. At the same time, we have some very dark things going on as well. And so, you know, that, that kind of takes us back to some of the things we've been talking about in this past year. You know, I've mentioned it, pastors mentioned it. There are things that are going on that we just have to understand and know is just a part of the times that we're living in. So let's go back and let's look again. We've looked at it many times before, but we're going to look at it again because we have to stay encouraged in this. Understanding and knowing that our God is at work, no matter what it looks like around us. So, Isaiah 60, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. I love this scripture, because this scripture is letting us know what is happening, but also what will happen, what is in store for us. His word is so incredible. I remember when I was first saved. You know, I, I dove into the Word. I wanted to read the Word. You know, and, and I wanted to know. I wanted to know what Jesus had to say. I wanted to know what His ways were. I, want, I wanted to become everything that He wanted me to become. And I loved, I loved just staying in the New Testament. It was hard for me to be in the Old Testament because I would read it kind of like for stories and think, how does this apply to us? And, you know, and it was just difficult for me to want to stay there. I would. But it was difficult because I just wanted to stay in the New Testament. Now, as I began to grow in the Lord, that changed, of course. And the Lord moved upon my life to, uh, to come and understand exactly what was going on. But let me tell you where I am today. You know, the Old Testament for me today uh, is especially, especially important to me. I, I can't seem to get out of the Old Testament. I mean, it is just incredible everything that it has to say because it says it says so much about our history and it says so much about our present, but it also says so much about our future. The Old Testament is now. It's our now. You, you read it and you go, oh my word, this is our now, you know. And so we need to understand what the Old Testament is saying because it is speaking to us about what is happening now in our lives and what God is at work doing. I know darkness has been covering the earth. We all know that. We see that. We see deep dark, darkness among many, many people. I mean, where they're so deceived or so evil or just so in bondage. It doesn't really matter. There's just things that we are being able to see. But you know what? That's not the only thing that that verse says. That verse says that the Lord will arise upon us, that his glory will be seen upon us. 
We have got to get that and understand that. God has plans for his sons and daughters. It's a fact. It doesn't say the darkness will disappear. He doesn't say, you know, he says those things are going on. Darkness, dark, deep darkness of other people, but the glory of the Lord rising upon who? His sons and daughters. Now, I know that maybe, just perhaps, you have been facing some huge challenges. It's happening all around us. All of us. Who isn't experiencing some kind of challenge in their life? Whether it be your, uh, you know, your family or your health or different situations and circumstances that are coming up. You know, there's a lot of things that can be challenging for us. But that doesn't mean God's not at work. It doesn't mean that at all. Perhaps we've been listening to voices. Voices of doubt. Let me tell you. When voices of doubt are speaking to us, we need to know that that's the enemy. It is the enemy, and he's got one purpose, and that's to pull us away from trusting our God, to move us out of our faith, to move us into a place where it looks so bad that we get caught up in fear, worry, and dread, that that's all we can see. All around us, wherever we look, that's all we see, and that begins to be, that's all we feel. And God wants us to get to that place where we recognize and know that is not what's all going on. Yes, that's going on, but there are other things going on too because our God is at work. Our God is faithful. He is a good God, and He is faithful. And the enemy would love for us to get in so much doubt about God not being there for us that we would begin to wonder, where is He? Where is He? But it's a lie. It's a trick of the enemy. We cannot fall for that because I'm going to tell you, God has hundreds and hundreds of promises in that word that tells us that he never leaves us or forsakes us and that he's constantly at work within our lives and he holds our future he does let's go back to isaiah 62 again yes once again there's darkness upon the land deep darkness upon the people but that is not for us it is not his sons and daughters are being raised up and they're being raised up to carry the glory of the Lord. We might not even know what all of that means yet. But I'm here to tell you that God's got a plan for His church. And His plan will unfold. His word is truth. This will happen. This will happen. You know, I know that we have been teaching this and we've been preaching this over and over and over again. And I hope we continue to do so. For how long? Until we see it. Till we get it. Till we understand it. Till we're walking in it. It doesn't matter. We need to understand that our God is at, at work within us. He's so good. He's so faithful. And He will never let us down. We are being taught how to use our swords. That's the Word of God, folks. That is the Word of God. Where we're going to cut out all of those voices of doubt and unbelief, you know, fear. All of those things that try to rob us of our faith in the Lord. We're going to get to the place where we truly embrace every promise of truth that God has given us. That's our victory. That's our joy. That's our peace. Over the past year, the Lord has kind of done a strange thing with me because it, it, He just said to me one day, uh, you believe that I will do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. And I thought, Yes, I do believe that, Lord. Ephesians 3.20 says that, that you will do that. And so he asked me, Well, then, what do you imagine that I will do? I thought, Well, Lord, I have a good imagination, and I can, I can really imagine and think and believe, completely believe, that you will do great and mighty things. You know, for starters, I know, I know that you're going to move upon my family, all of my family. You're going to move upon them. They're going to have an encounter with you to where they come to understand and know your love and who you are. And they will want to make that choice to make you their Lord and Savior just like you moved upon my life to know that truth. I believe you for that, Lord. I believe you to heal sickness and disease of all sorts. I, 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 do believe, I, I absolutely believe that you're going to return to us everything Satan has stolen from us. Lord, one of those things that I believe for is my husband's eye. That dead eye. I believe that thing to come back to life and I am going to be able to see that beautiful green eye of his again. 
I believe you for that. I believe you to grow limbs back. I believe you to uh, re restore to us, uh, place within us whatever we need. I believe that we can have new body parts in our life. I believe for that. And the Lord's response to me, when I spit all of that out, His response was, well, that's good. But what I will do is much more than that. I thought, well, Lord, I believe that. I mean, I, I, I believe, I believe in great and mighty things. And so several months went by. And guess what? He asked me again, well, what do you imagine that I will do now? Well, Lord, I believe you're going to reveal truth to every lie that we have been given down through the years. I believe that evil is going to be pushed back. I believe your sons and daughters are going to rise up and they're going to carry the glory that is going to make a difference in this earth. That it's going to touch multitude of people and the great harvest is going to come in. I believe that we're going to see an incredible change upon this earth and in our lives. Again, the Lord responded to me, good, but it is beyond that. And I thought, oh, Lord, yes, I believe you for beyond that. I got a third response, a third questioning, rather, I, I, again. It came again, you know, and I threw out what seemed to be impossible situations. I mean, I threw out some really strange kind of things that I won't even mention here. But his response was the same. It was the same. And so I began to realize, I just came to the conclusion that what's going on here is that no matter what my mind could come up with, it was never going to be big enough for what our God has planned for our lives. What we're going to have, what we're going to walk in, what we're going to be a part of, we have no, we have no clue how big that really is. 1 Corinthians 2.9, let's take a look at that. In the King James Version, it says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I want to read that out of the Passion Translation as well. It says this, This is why the scriptures say, Things never discovered or heard of before, things beyond our ability to imagine. These are the many things God has in store for all his lovers. And then Isaiah 64, 4. And I'm going to read this out of the Passion Translation as well. It says, These things had never been heard of before. You did things never dreamed of. No one perceived your greatness. No eye has ever seen a God like you who intervenes for those who wait and long for you. Saints, we have got to walk through the door of faith into more, into more. Because no matter what we're believing for, God has more. God has more. You know, this year, 2024, has been known as the year of doors. Doors to open into the new and doors to close as well. We need to step into believing God for more than what we are feeling, for more than what we are seeing, for more than what we are hearing, for more than what we are experiencing. Because God has more for us than we can possibly imagine. Let your imaginations go. Let it soar into the heavenly realm. Let God move upon your heart to believe for things bigger than you can possibly imagine. We have got to shut out those doors that carry the voices of doubt, fear, and unbelief. Things of, that causes us to worry. Those things are not of God. We need to shut those doors to that so that we can believe God is at work and He's at work mightily. Because we want to walk through the door more. The more of what? The more of God's love. The more of His grace. The more of His gifts. The more of His ways. And much, much more. Because I'm telling you, God wants us to get to the place where no matter, no matter where we're going with our thoughts, it still is not going to be as big as what He has planned for us. God has more than we can possibly think or imagine. So don't be afraid to believe for big beyond what you can think or imagine. Go there. Decree those things. Declare those things. Because I am sure, you know, that when God was taking his people 
out of Egypt and they came up on the Red Sea, I think that they probably weren't thinking or imagining what was about to happen there, what they were about to experience. I bet that went beyond their imagination. This was way beyond what they could have possibly thought, that that river was going to split wide open and they were going to walk through that and then it was going to drown all their enemies. Well, you know what? That was beyond their imagination. But you know what God has for us? The same, doing what we can't even imagine. It doesn't matter what our situations are. It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. It doesn't matter what Satan is trying to do. It does not matter. God's plans for us is what will unfold. And we can't figure out his plans, but they will be phenomenal. They will be beyond what we can think. Yes, the, the scripture does proclaim, the, what, what we're looking at does proclaim two dynamics going on here. That's darkness everywhere you look and upon people, so many people, but there is also outpouring over God's people. We're changing. We're being prepared for his glory. It's going to rise upon us. We don't even really know what all that means, but it's going to be glorious. It is absolutely going to be beyond what we think and imagine. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God is doing so much more behind the scenes. He really is. All, you know, uh, yeah, I'm sure that we're not seeing a lot because, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of things falsely communicated to us through our corrupt media. We don't know what's going on. It, God could do miraculous things and they wouldn't hear it. I'm telling you, God is working behind the scenes. We have no clue what all he is doing, what all is happening. But we will. We will know because he is preparing a way to reveal truth. He is, he, he is going to expose our enemies' lives. You know, his word is very clear that he is going to reveal all the hidden things that's done in the darkness, that's done behind, that's done behind closed doors. God is going to reveal all these things. He is going to push back the darkness. We can count on that. And his glory is going to rise upon us, you know, and it's going to draw in the greatest harvest of all times. People are going to be rushing to want to know that God that we serve. I'm telling you, God is raising us up. And what is he raising us up to be? The influence. The influence in this earth. Sons and daughters are being raised up to be the influence everywhere we are. Everywhere we are. The influence of holiness and righteousness and, and, and just being, you know, what God wants us to be. We will be that great example to all people. You know, and I'm telling you, we're going to have influence in every area where influence could be. So guess what? That will be in our churches. We will be a great influence in our church. We'll be a great influence in our government. We're going to be a great influence in our educational system, in our arts, in our entertainment. We're going to be an influence in our family. We're going to be an, in, an influence in our economy. You name it. Anything that you can possibly think of. Arts and entertainment. All of it. All of it. We are going to be an influence in every one of those places. Why? Because our world is headed for a change. A glorious change. God is behind it, and God is going to use his sons and daughters in ways that we can't possibly imagine. So we need to quit just sitting back, doing nothing, and just hoping that God will come and rescue us by taking us out of this dark world. We need to believe something a little differently there. That's not God's plan. He's not trying to rescue us. Why? Because God's plan for us is to come back for a glorious church. God's plans for us is to influence this world, to cause change, that we're that change. We bring the change to the earth, that we rule and reign with him, that we occupy until he comes. That's what his plan is. And as long as we are here and we rise up and partner with our God to do the things that he wants us to do, I'm gonna tell you the enemy can be stopped from the destruction that he wants to bring right now. So while we, his body, are still up on this earth, guess what? We can make the difference. We need to make the difference. We need to bring about the change, and we need to be led by God to rule and reign upon this earth by spoiling the enemy's assignments. We can do that. We can do that. 
Yes, there will be that glorious day, no doubt, when the Father says, bring my family home. Yeah, I know we all look forward to that. What a great and glorious time. But it won't be for rescue from this earth. It will be for a celebration. A celebration. In the meantime, what are we going to do? We're going to bring heaven to earth, just like he wants us to. That's what he's called us to do. Bring heaven to this earth. Be the influence that God intends for us to be. And we can do that. We absolutely can do that. We truly are living in incredible times. We need to understand and recognize that. Look for God's glory. Look for what God is doing. Don't just be so focused only upon what the darkness is doing. Keep your gaze and your focus upon the Lord. And I tell you, if you will do that, you will remain in perfect peace. The Word declares it so. Keep your eyes upon Him. And I'd just like to close with this statement. Because I can't help but say it. And I hope Bobby Williams can hear it. I hope the Lord will just let her hear her say that we too are saying what she said all the time. Good things are happening. And better things are on the way. Whew. Do you feel it? Do you know it? Do you understand? We do have good things going on in this earth. We do. And in our lives. But there are much, much better things that are on the horizon. Don't give up on your God. He's at work in our life. He has plans for us, and Satan will not stop those plans. So let's pray. Father, we just praise you and thank you for your hand upon our lives, for all that you have planned for us, for all that we will get a grip on and rise up in, where we'll come to the place of fully understanding and being moved and enabled and empowered by you to accomplish all that you have. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Thank you that you call us your sons and daughters. Thank you for the plans that you have. And Lord, we just decree and declare right now that we want to embrace everything that you have. We rise up against the enemy's assignments. We render them null and void in our life. We will not listen to the voices of doubt. We will not listen to the voices of fear and worry. We rise up, God, and we embrace your word, every bit of your word, and understand and know that you are absolutely 100% good and faithful in every way. We praise you and we thank you for your hand upon our lives and what you have planned. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, girl groups, see you later.